Okay, I'm way too low. Okay. So I'm at my dad's right now with the ranch. And you know it's regardless of how hot today is, supposedly it's the hottest day in Phoenix this summer. But honestly, at the ranch, I feel like the weather's always slightly cooler. That's been that's my favorite part about like having been raised here is like even though it is hot, it's still hot outside. Don't get me wrong, but at least it's bearable. We have a lot of shade and we have a lot of trees, so it's always cool to be here even in the summer. But anyways, I just wanted to record real quick. Um, I guess just my thoughts on existence <laughs> yeah i'm still covering up my smile but guess what guys i finally have an appointment set for july 10th today is what is today what's the last days of june okay we're in the 20s 27th maybe i don't know i'm not keeping track of the days i guess but my appointment for my tooth is July 10th, so your girl's finally gonna be able to smile. I'm so happy. It's finally happening. It's been a long process. It's been a long toothless journey. So let me just say right now, like, to whoever still was fucking with me even throughout this phase, like, y'all real for that, because I know y'all have my back no matter what at that point. <laughs> but thank you guys for being so patient about that and, like, being willing to see me on on my youtube channel with other tooth <laughs> still cute though still cute though that's my favorite line still cute though um yeah i'm excited about that anyways back back on track what i was saying um my thoughts on existence i felt like this was something worth talking about because it's been heavy on my mind every single day like every single day i've i've thought about it I've reflected on this and I would say it really started with the okay like as funny as it is like it really did start with the submarine story like the whole situation that happened there you know and I was talking to my friend about you know like if they imploded right the submarine like they really did just disappear from existence within one second to another like that's all it was it was that simple and that idea right there straight up set me into an existential crisis i was like the fact that everything that i have built everything that's in my thoughts this whole life can be gone like this within a second is wild to me and of course that was my ego you know like being really scared and I could sense that my heart started beating faster and whatnot um but you know just going from there my thoughts really escalated into like what even is existence <laughs> right um like why did we get the chance to exist even I don't know, it could be coincidence, but at the end of the day, I'm the conclusion that this brought me to, and this is why I felt that this was worth sharing, because the conclusion that this brought me to was actually, at the end of the day, so beautiful. So I'm grateful that, I'm not grateful that, you know, these people on a submarine passed away, I'm just grateful that it kind of sent me into that spiral because that spiral and that like existential little crisis honestly kind of humbled me again it's not that it humbled me again it's that it refreshed that memory or that reminder of like hey like literally every single second of existence is like a miracle like that's what it made me it gave me that refresher again of like really though every single second of existence is so precious every single one even right here as i sit on this chair and you know we don't think of it in terms of seconds obviously we don't think of life in terms of seconds 
but I think the moments or the places or the people that make us feel like time stops I think that's what life is like truly about like for example for me the this ranch right here has always made me feel that way like for me when I'm at this ranch time does not matter for me the ranch is literally like a getaway that's that's what it feels like for me the ranch is like as if i'm on a tropical vacation somewhere it's the same feeling i don't have to travel anywhere other than to my dad's ranch to realize like or not realize but to be present and to be in the moment because when i'm here i'm not focused on any responsibilities like i don't give a shit about nothing when i'm here i don't i don't care about any drama well i'm never really in drama but I don't care about any problems I have in life. I don't care about any stress. I don't care about any responsibilities. When I'm here, I'm in tune with being with my family and being with nature. I'm in, I'll be in the backyard walking barefoot in the grass or, you know, I'll just be sitting on the couch and like doing me. And a lot of times even, I end up getting so sleepy here. And why? Because I feel safe here. I feel like, my defenses are down like oh, like i can just be i can be it's safe to be sleepy here that's how i feel here it's safe to be tired it's safe to let my guard down it's safe to not care about anything and i always end up taking a nap on the big couch here like it's my favorite place to take a nap it's just so cozy and then ever since i was a little girl my dad would always have the tv on so i would just like having that tv noise in the background is so soothing for me and just being here so, you know, existing to me really is about these moments. The people who make me feel safe enough to just exist, not have to think so much, you know? And, you know, going back to saying what I was saying about every second being a miracle, what I love about having an existential crisis sometimes is that it makes me realize that every single person we meet not even it's not even about just people but every single thing that happens to us if you think about it this way is a miracle every single thing like the fact that i'm even sitting on this chair right now the fact that i made it from my house to the ranch today that's a huge miracle like the fact that I was able to eat today, the fact that Saint is alive today with me, the fact that, oh damn, I love feeling this wind. The fact that I'm alive today, the fact that my dad's alive today, my family's alive, it's all a miracle. Every single little thing, it's, and those are big things, you know? But even the fact that I was able to like, look at this tree sway, like this tree's a fucking miracle. Everything, we are going through every single day is a miracle and so i was talking about this idea with a friend like we were smoking right and this is a friend i that i think these are the biggest miracles when when you run into someone like out in a public space because this friend we met at a party like a birthday party right and the crazy thing about this birthday party is that neither of us wanted to be wanted to go neither of us wanted to be that be there I just happened to go because I told the friend I would be there for her and I didn't want to be a flake so I just showed up anyway and I was like it's her birthday let me be there for her right but I really was not in the mood I was really on the verge of canceling and then the friend that, that I met there he, he was also like yo I was really about to not go or like I was about to leave as soon as I got there because I was just not feeling it and it's just crazy to me how we ended up becoming friends after that because if you think about it if every little thing in life is a miracle okay let's say we're looking at it with that mentality if every single thing in life is a miracle to me what was baffling is that if everything in life is a miracle do you understand how many miracles had to occur for me and this friend to have met to have been at the same party at the same time under the right circumstances and we happen to get along so well like that's 
there were so many miracles in place that had to happen in order for us to meet. So when you think about it that way, it's so hard to think that the people we meet is just by coincidence. Like that's so hard for me to believe because the fact that so many miracles had to happen, like you had to be at the right place at the right exact time I was there and happened to like want to talk to, to me and vice versa. And we were both in a good mood to become friends with each other and we had a good conversation. So many miracles had to align in order for us to become friends. And yet they all happened. So to me, it's like, are all those miracles really coincidence though? Or are these people, you know, the people that become close to us, like, are they all people we had soul contracts with? You know, if you believe in that type of stuff. I don't know if I believe in that type of stuff, but you know, situations like this and like thoughts like this make me believe like, is this someone that in the spiritual realm, if it's, you know, in the spiritual realm, did we say that we were gonna meet here and teach each other something, you know? Same thing with like, it's just, you know, situations like that, like, like a situation ship, I mean, like, we met when I had a boyfriend and we were already cool. Like we didn't talk or nothing, but it was like, we met. And then, you know, we had to meet under the right circumstances again in order to get to the point that we're at right now. And I was single. But we just so happened to be in the same spot partying when we met. And to me that makes me feel like so like not now now this is a person that I've met twice now. So many circumstances had to align for us to get to the point that we're at right now in our, you know, situationship. And you know, that might it, I don't even that might lead to nothing. The point is like I think something is meant to happen there and in the sense of like we're meant to teach each other something it's hard to believe that that's just coincidence like oh whatever it was what it was and by no like every single person especially the people that we get along with after all these miracles occurred for us to have met there's something that has to be learned there or taught there you know like we're in each other's lives for a reason and i'm not even talking about the people who it's not even just about the people who get close to us it's about everyone it's about the person we just had a conversation with at work today who just stopped by and we never see again because even that small situation right you had to show up you had to be in phoenix arizona and show up exactly to where i work in order for you to have that conversation for me to, with me today and you had to make it safely that's another miracle. You had to be in Phoenix, that's another miracle. You had to come to my job site specifically, that's another miracle. You had to come up to me specifically, another miracle. So you see like these things aren't coincidental. I think everything, every single little second, every single little moment, every single little occurrence that we go through, it's all a miracle. And when you look at life that way, it can be scary because it makes it feel a lot more fragile. It makes it seem a lot more precious, you know? But at the same time, to me, more so than making life seem scarier, it seems more beautiful because of how precious it is and how our existence can be taken from us from one second to the next. And I think we take that for granted because it's easy to just get caught up in the day-to-day -day things, but that's just where I'm at and I had to share that because that's how I'm viewing life right now like every single thing that is happening to me right now I'm very very conscious of I'm very hyper aware right now I'm very much here and I'm grateful for it all and I really truly do consider everything that happens to me and even not even just to me but to others around me anything in my surroundings I think it's all a miracle and I'm looking at it through the lens of like, what is this meant to teach me? Or is and and not everything has to teach us something either. Some things we can just enjoy, but at the end of the day, like 
remembering that it's all a miracle really makes life so worthwhile and you know i'm seeing miracles in the tiniest simplest things now and and i feel good about it. like I, it just makes you feel good it makes you feel like it makes you feel like i don't really even need much like everything is already a miracle in my life what more could i ask for truly you know so i just wanted to speak on that because i think we forget how precious life is and how much everything really is miraculous and we forget that our existence is miraculous and you know when you look at life that way it's there's a whole lot less i feel like there's a lot less suffering when you look at life that way you know when you're like everything everything is meant to happen the way it is it's all a miracle you know regardless of how it happened and you know as i'm thinking about these thoughts what really assured it is like i ran into a poem today and i'll leave you guys with this i'll end the video with this it was it's a poem that honestly really did stick with me and i think i might even get it tattooed and like if you know my philosophy on tattoos you know how much of a big deal that is for me to consider getting it tattooed but damn i wish i remembered it but it's it's called the two-headed calf and i can't remember it verbatim but i will try to recite it okay so i tried to like recite it by memory and i botched it <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and read it from this book. So it's called The Two-Headed Calf by Laura Gilpin. And this is my favorite poem at the moment now, since I just discovered it today. But <laughs> that's how it goes. The Two-Headed Calf. Tomorrow, when the farm boys find this freak of nature, they will wrap his body in newspaper and carry him to the museum. But tonight, he is alive and in the north field with his mother. It's a perfect summer evening, the moon rising over the, or the orchard, the wind in the grass, and he stares into the sky. There are twice as many stars as usual. That shit hit. No, at first, at first I was a little bit lost. But I, I will admit, I was a little bit lost. And I reread it, and I was like, <laughs> that shit hit that shit hit back and it like gave me a little like knot in my throat because you know basically it's it basically just stated you know like as tragic as it is that he only existed for this one night like that would that was enough like he didn't need to exist for another night because the fact that he even got to exist and and be with his mother in this field and you know experience that motherly love and look up at the stars and experience this beautiful summer night that was enough that was enough of a miracle and you know there's there's tragedy in that but there's also so much beauty in that and i feel like we could relate to that with our own life because sure you know even if we make it to a hundred years of age you know at the end of the day a hundred years is such a tiny speck of time in universe in a universal sense like we really are here for just one night so i'm about to be corny as fuck but for this one night that we have we should be looking up at the stars and experiencing our mother's love or our loved one's love and we should consider that enough. And it's okay to want more out of life, it is. But I'm just saying, whatever you want more out of, you know, keep yourself at peace with the reminder that even just experiencing love from a loved one, even just being able to look at the night sky, you hear these birds chirp, that was enough of existence. And that's what I'm coming to peace with. That's what, I'm coming to terms with like our short 
and bleak existence is enough so yeah guys i want i'll leave you guys with that and i hope you remember um that everything's a miracle and life is beautiful our existence is beautiful our existence is a miracle and that's more than enough to be happy about i love you guys thank you so much for watching